Hi, I'm Mario Batali, and welcome to Batali Cooks 4. Today's ingredients were selected by Anne Stratcha of Gloucester, Massachusetts, and the ingredients are monkfish, artichokes, kale, and lemon. I thought, what could I do that would use all of these in a delicious way, and I thought, how about some monkfish picata? First, get your monkfish. It's beautiful, it looks just like that. If you get it from a fishmonger, it will probably look like this. But at the tricky spots, they always have one of these. And in Seattle, at the Pike Place Market, they usually have a little string attached to it so it can bark at you when you get too close if you're a child. I'm going to leave that for a second because I'm going to prep the artichokes first. Buy baby artichokes. They don't have a choke. Cut them off right at the top of the last set of leaves. Then peel them off till you get to the white tender parts just like so, and then take a paring knife and trim along from that bract right at the base of it just to get rid of that kind of woody extra piece there, but leave as much of that delicious stem, which has the same flavor as the artichoke heart, and also looks really cool. Then what you do is you take your knife and cut straight across into thin pieces. Now at this point you could eat this raw and I often make a little salad of these with a little lemon juice and a little extra virgin olive oil and eat them with something called brazala which is air dried beef. Because we're cutting and preparing these in advance you want to make sure that you put them in a little acidulated water which is just water with lemon juice and stir that around. That'll stop them from oxidizing and turning that kind of crazy rust color. All right, so that's artichoke one-on-one. -on -one. Then we're gonna take our fish. So now you buy monkfish, it's just like this. It's kind of the tail. What I like to do is cut it into almost scallopini, a third to a half inch thick. If you're worried about this, have your fish guy do it or your fishmonger, guy or gal, and just bring it home just like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna season it. Sicilian sea salt, finely ground, and a little bit of nice back pepper. And then we're gonna dredge it. Now there's two kinds of flour to use, AP, which you should already have, which is all purpose, but there's also something called Wonder Flour that I love for the crust that it gives. It's got a little bit of rye in it, so it makes it a firmer crust, so we're using Wonder Flour. And you just dredge it like this. You could cut these little pieces of fish up in advance, but you cannot dredge them in advance. You have to dredge them and then go directly into your pan. Start with a hot pan, then dump the cold oil in, then go ahead and put the monkfish scallopini, as it were. So now I have my artichokes, I have my lemon zest, I have a red onion, and I'm gonna saute the kale and use it as kind of a bed underneath this beautiful monkfish scallopini or monkfish piccata. Just like that, straight across. You're using both olfactory and your auditory sensations to make sure that you're not overdoing it, but you gotta leave it in the pan. The biggest and most common mistake that home cooks make is they start moving things around. You don't wanna do that. You just move it a little bit and then let it just sit there. Now, I've got my red onion. I've got extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna take the red onion into the pan, and I'm immediately going to season that red onion because I want to start to draw the liquid out. I'm not looking to get a crisp red onion or an onion ring. And then I'm gonna take this kale, any kale, any cruciferous vegetable can be cooked like this and it makes it absolutely delicious. And I'm gonna cut it into small pieces and throw them all in at once. And also, I'm going to season that right now. Give that a little toss, this is less essential. Now, while my fish is cooking, I'm gonna to put together the rest of the stuff that goes in it. I've got my artichokes already prepped. I've got some parsley that I'm gonna chop kind of into a rough chiffonade. One of the nice things about monkfish is that it doesn't overcook and fall apart. So you can really let it go in the pan. And this is also something that you could start in advance and kind of reheat in the sauce without any real breakdown. One of the things with fish when you're cooking it, you want to cook it literally 80% on that first side. So don't yet go at it, even though it seems like you want to. So I've got 
parsley. I've got my artichokes. Now I take them out and drain them. And I'm gonna season those just a little bit. And then I have tiny little capers, the nonpareils. These are my favorites. They have a great texture as well as a nice salty flavor. I've got my kale going here. Keep that going. And now the monkfish is ready to go. So we just flip it like so. It's literally almost completely cooked through. Then I take my artichoke and I put them right on the bottom of the pan because I want to immediately transfer heat right to them because this is going to be the only cook they're going to get. Now, as I said before, you could eat them raw, sliced like this, but I like kind of the way that little artichokey goldenness happens when you put just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on them and leave them right there. So a little pepper on top of them. And now you're slightly patient. You add a little bit of wine, about a half a cup, maybe even three quarters of a cup. There's always a question about what wine to use. They always say try to use the wine left over from the night before his dinner. At my house, there's never any wine left over from the night before his dinner, so generally we like to cook with the wine that we want to start drinking right now. I'm going to turn my kale off because now it's got that great kind of toasty, beautiful, almost stir-fry feel to it. And now we're at the time where we finish our sauce. So we add a little bit of capers. Then we take that lemon juice out of the half a lemon. You don't want to put the lemon in too early because then what happens is it just turns a little funny and off. Stir that through like so. Then we're going to add the parsley and now go to the plate. Kale onto plate, then monkfish onto kale. then sauce onto monkfish. And again, Italian food is all about balance. So not a lot of sauce, just enough sauce to kind of get them going. And then to finish it at the very last second, another little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And voila, monkfish, piccata or scallopini with artichokes and kale.